for human brain and for human mind, it's a little bit difficult to understand or to comprehend some of the extremely large structures in existence out there in the universe. Structures so big that they span millions of light years across, containing trillions and trillions solar masses in mass. And it's actually only in the last few decades that we finally started to realize how these structures are connected, mostly because modern telescopes allow us to map all of this in three dimensions, which then allows us to distinguish individual structures in the enormous sea of galaxies. And today we're going to discuss one of the recent discoveries of what seems to be a new record holder, the largest supercluster ever seen. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Let's discuss superclusters and some of the recent discoveries from the last few years, talk about what all of this means, and I guess compare some of this to some of the other structures we already know. But here I wanted to start with a brief reminder that in the last year or so, there have been several major discoveries in regards to really massive, really large structures that kind of make no sense. Recently we actually talked about this very strange bubble, referred to as Hololivana, whose origin is currently still not understood. And this actually seems to be in the Milky Way's vicinity. But it's over a billion light years across, 1.3 billion actually, making the structure a little bit too large to currently make sense. Likewise, we've discussed this unusual ring formation that was discovered not so long ago, currently referred to as the Big Ring. Also over a billion light years across, not entirely well understood. You can learn more about these particular structures in some of the videos in the description. And so quite a lot of these new structures, unexplained structures, have been discovered in the last few years. But some structures do make sense to us and actually help us understand how the universe evolves and how galaxies seem to evolve inside of them. And here I actually wanted to start with Liniakea. This is something that was originally discovered, or I guess originally defined, in 2014. And by definition, Liniakea is a kind of a conglomerate of various clusters that all seem to move in the same direction. Now they're not necessarily gravitationally connected, but they all seem to have very similar overall motion, and for the most part they're all headed in the same direction, toward the mysterious Great Attractor, something you can also learn about in one of the videos in the description. And so the Milky Way galaxy and the local group, along with all of our neighbors, are inside Liniakea, along with approximately 100,000 galaxies in total. Although here it's important to understand that this is not a permanent structure, because it's not gravitationally connected, so eventually it's most likely going to fall apart, becoming much smaller. And based on previous observations, researchers believe that there might be about 10 million superclusters in the entire observable universe, with many obviously differing in size and in mass. But then in 2022, there was actually a really interesting discovery that not a lot of people talked about. A discovery of what seemed to be a record holder. An enormous supercluster containing approximately 10 to the power of 16 solar masses, or basically like million trillion solar masses of various stars, gas, dark matter, and so on. It also appeared to be maybe about 10 times more massive than Leniakea, and was roughly around 1.3 billion light years across. This was at a redshift of 0.55, or approximately 6.7 billion light years away from planet Earth. And interestingly, because of the size, it already made no sense. Mostly because the official theoretical limit for any of our structure is usually 1.2 billion light years. Nothing should have grown as big as that in such a short time. And this was made out of 15 massive galactic clusters and a huge number of filaments, all connected together as a large structure. But because this was larger and approximately 10 times more massive than Leniakea, this was a pretty big discovery. So big as a matter of fact that it even received a really cool name, King Gaidora, an enormous three-headed monster from the Godzilla series. Although as far as I know, Gaidora is just a Japanese pronunciation for Hydra. And so one of the studies in the description talks a little bit more about this discovery and how absolutely enormous this was. But since this was 10 times more massive than the Leniakea, our own supercluster, it also meant that it's approximately 5,000 times more massive than the local group, or 10,000 times more massive than the Milky Way galaxy. So definitely quite an impressive object in terms of size and mass. It also seems to be one of the largest structures in general, at least according to Wiki. Although here you have to be careful because some of the values and some of the mass values especially were actually listed as slightly incorrect. But anyway, so that was back in 2022, or more like 2023. Now we have something even more exciting. A group of Estonian researchers, who apparently are very well known for supercluster studies, recently released a major study 
discovering 662 new superclusters within several billion light years of planet Earth. And of all of those newly discovered clusters, one of them really stood out. The cluster you see right here. They now named it a NASTO supercluster, named after one of the main researchers behind supercluster studies, responsible for a lot of major discoveries. He actually recently turned 95, so this was his birthday present. And for my 95th birthday, I would also like to have something named after me. It doesn't have to be a supercluster, can be just a tiny cluster, I'm okay with that. Anyway, on a more serious note, this right now might be a new record holder. It seems to be about 2.6 times more massive than King Ghidorah, despite being approximately 3 to 4 times smaller. Here the total mass is 26 million billion solar masses, or 2.6 times 10 to the power of 16, or 26,000 times the mass of the Milky Way. And since this is approximately 3 billion light years away from us, this is also one of the closer such massive structures to us. But it's only about 360 million light years across, so it's clearly a lot more dense and a lot more concentrated. Just as a reminder, the King Ghidorah is about 1.3 billion light years across. So about 3 times to maybe 4 times larger. But on average, a lot of those 660 superclusters were actually pretty big in general. 200 million light years across, with the average mass of about 6 times 10 to the 15 solar masses. Which seems to be an average size for a typical supercluster or basically a galactic bundle that tends to move in the same direction. But apart from just discovering these clusters, the researchers here were also able to figure out certain properties of various galaxies inside of them, basically making some really important discoveries. For example, most clusters of galaxies inside a typical supercluster tend to be heavier than clusters outside of a supercluster. In other words, galaxies in these superclusters tend to be much chunkier on average. Which of course implies that galaxies evolving and growing inside superclusters seem to grow differently from the ones on the outside. And so clusters of galaxies in various superclusters seem to grow heavier for some reasons still unknown. But even though there is so much mass inside of these superclusters, on average their density is actually lower than galaxies themselves. Here the mass is distributed over a very very large volume and so on average they're just a little bit denser than the space outside. But the density inside of these clusters is definitely enough to affect the motion of gas and everything else on the inside. And so a typical supercluster, depending on its shape, will actually guide a lot of the matter in various ways. Just as a reminder, in the Laniakea supercluster, where we live, everything seems to be guided toward the Great Attractor. We actually have no idea if there's anything there, it might be just a collection of various velocity vectors just kind of merging in the same direction. And so this seems to be typical for all of these superclusters. Everything in them seems to be headed in a very similar way, with all of the mass inside affecting the overall motion. And even more intriguingly, a lot of galaxies inside of these superclusters exhibit much lower expansion speeds compared to the expansion of the universe itself. In other words, even though we know the universe is expanding, if you are inside a supercluster, things will actually look or feel a little bit different. Mostly because a lot of the mass inside just holds things a little bit more and so the expansion is slightly lower. And that's of course a really important discovery in order to understand what's happening with the Hubble tension and the overall expansion of the universe. And so because this was discovered in so many of these superclusters, this is something a lot of cosmologists will probably be taking a look at once again just to figure out if there are maybe some answers. But despite all of this gravitational pull, the overall effect is not as dramatic. Meaning that these superclusters are not gravitationally bound. Technically, they're not gravitational structures. They're structures where galaxies seem to be moving in the same direction and seem to affect each other to some extent, but these are not permanent. Eventually, because of the expansion of the universe, most of these will fall apart completely. And last but not least, the scientists in the study discovered a correlation between the supercluster's density and its overall size. There seems to be some kind of an inverse relationship. The more dense the cluster, the smaller its overall size. But overall it's really the discovery of this record holder and that seems to be the most exciting. We don't really know much else about a NASTO supercluster yet, mostly because this is a recent discovery, but I'm sure we'll have more updates very soon just because of the magnitude of this unusual discovery. On that note, at least for now, that's pretty much it. Check out additional links and all of the additional videos in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.